Hi there, my name is Trolls, and in this video we're going to go deep into Century Ostinato strings. This is a giant collection with over 20,000 different ostinato samples, and when you look at the articulations, which is completely symmetrical for both violins, violas, cellos, and basses, um, it may look simple on the surface here, but once you get a little deeper into the library, you're going to realize that these patches here are dynamically layered. So for example, when you play any of the ostinatos and you use your mod wheel, you can crossfade through dynamics. On top of that, we got four microphone positions, mixed, closed, deca, and wide. But let me just describe the articulation matrix very quickly, and then uh, we're going to listen to individual examples of all these things here. We have three different types of spiccato first. So spiccato is the bouncing bow motion you have on a string. We have normal spiccatos, then we have double spiccatos, and we have triplet spiccatos. And that's simply just because there's so many different ways you can do that bouncing motion, and the connectivity between the notes when you do ostinatos is important. It's a little bit the equivalent of legato, but for single notes meaning that you need that connectivity. So that's why we did three different types of spiccato. We also did Mikado and Bartok. But more importantly, we have four different types of ostinatos, and I'll be demonstrating them in many different ways um, in this demo here. We have flowing short, flowing fast. These are sort of connected notes. And then we have two types of more agile, action-based type of ostinatos. And on top of that, we also have additional arcs and chaos runs as well. So there's a lot in the library, but most of the things are really built in. It's super easy to use. You simply just play and go. So uh, why don't we just start out here by listening to the bass spiccatos. Or something like this. Or this. And that same philosophy prevails for all the instrument groups, whether it's basses or cellos or violas or violins. Uh, let me just show you um, some of the spiccato notes here with the cellos. And let me just show you the same thing here with the And the spiccatos are great generally for more action-based stuff. You can see you can combine the spiccatos, both the regular ones, the double and the triplets, uh, in many different variations. All this is tempo synced, of course, as well. But sometimes you need more connectivity in the notes. That's what I sort of call legato for singular notes. Uh, let me just show you a little bit uh, what's that about here by triggering some of our flooring ostinatos together with our agile here. So in this example, I was using both the basses, the cellos, the violas, and the violins. Let me just try to isolate each of them. And if you noticed, you could feel the dynamics go in and out. And that's simply me just moving the mod wheel, which is represented by seeing the dynamics button here. Uh, when you move your mod wheel, you can crossfade between the different velocities that all the ostinatos were recorded on. Let me just isolate each piece here so you can um, hear how it um, all works together. And let me overlay with the cellos. And the violas. And let's add the violins too. Now 
Let me just show you the four different types of ostinatos. I'm not going to move the module this time, uh, but just to show you the speed levels. Obviously, everything is completely synchronized to your DAW tempo. You can also go half tempo, normal tempo, triplets, and twice as fast on the speed knob down here. But let me just show you, they actually get gradually twice as fast. So there's a logical symmetry to how they work, and that goes across all string groups. Every single thing in this library is completely symmetrical. So whether you play the cellos against violas, violins, basses, they're all designed to match together. And it's really a lot of fun in the library to experiment with the different speeds. For example, in this example, I have the basses playing a really slow sort of, and then you've got the violas playing four times as fast here. Um, and it's a beautiful way of exploring the Sting Orchestra and see what you can do with ostinatos, um, not just having them play the same thing, but actually have some things play slower and some things play faster. And here's another example playing the cellos reasonably fast and again the violas keep them super fast with a little bit of bass in the background as well. And violas are really one of the sort of leading instruments when it comes to ostinatos because they're not as bright as the violins, but they're phenomenal for creating that sort of rhythmic accentuation of your string group, but not in the highest register. You want to have them a little bit down there so you create enough room for the melody. And certainly you can add the violins um, on top of that as well. Um, let me try to play another piece here and let's get a little bit of the violins in here as well. And those little piano notes was coming from our 1985 passionate piano staccato patch. One aspect that I really enjoy about the library is the ability to switch between articulations in real time. If you notice down here, we have all these key switches and they correlate to um, all the patches up here. And you can change the key switches just by uh, moving your mouse up and down here on the control thing. You can also double click here and get access to the articulation browser. So you can build your complete own articulation matrix. For the purpose of this demo here, I just have loaded all the sort of core things that I normally use. But check this one out here where I'm switching between slower tempos and faster tempos in real time just using key switches. Which is Let's take um, a closer look at the violins here. Let me just start with the different types of spiccato notes and then we're going to go into the ostinato. But it's really cool to hear the library standalone as well, um, not just uh, all the things combined because that sounds beautiful. But check this one out just uh, on their own. All right, let me just try to add some uh, cellos to this particular string pattern here. The violins are really um, dominating this piece, but it's so beautiful sometimes to have those slower floating notes from the darker instruments underneath.
And I love the cellos in this library here. Uh, let me just show you a couple of the articulations standalone. And let me trigger them twice as fast as well. And it's really as easy as that. These things are played live on a keyboard, just moving about wheel. And playing the ostinatos in the same fashion that you would play a piano, it's just a basic chords and the wonders start happening. Let's also examine the violas here. And it's funny because this is pretty basic orchestration. We're just dealing with single notes and triplets, but try that with normal spiccato notes and you're not gonna get the same connectivity for those faster like da 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 da, like that grit in the note. The spiccato is really good for that action stuff. They do have more of that sort of pointy definition that's simply generated by the attack of that sort of bouncing move on the string. Whereas these guys over here, particularly the two first ones, are really good for that more sort of flow, slow stuff. Or we can go slightly faster and just add a little bit of slow bass to it. And this combination is beautiful too. Let's go twice as fast as we just did on the violas, but keep the basses super slow. And a really cool trick when you use these libraries and all of our orchestral libraries actually, is to use both CC1 and CC11. Most people, and I've talked about this in the video, will normally use their mod wheel, meaning that they're gonna control the dynamics, you're gonna control the crossfades of the sounds here. And that's brilliant, that's really where the majority of the texture lies in. But if you wanna add a little bit of additional expression, you're gonna use the expression knob CC11 here. Um, I have it assigned to all my MIDI controllers. They're always CC1 and CC11 on my two main sliders. Once you get used to them, um, you can't really live without them because this one here will crossfade and change the texture of the sound. This one here is essentially controlling the volume, but it's really good for sort of additional sculpting. So always use both of them um, if you're serious about more dynamic kind of scoring. Let me just um, play the same piece again here and try to watch how both the dynamic knob and the expression knob um, are moving throughout the piece to create a little more expression than dynamics. Let me show you um, another example of that.
And you know what? Let me also show you the bases actually. Bases always sort of get ignored in orchestral libraries. It's always about the fancy violins and cellos and violas. But uh, check these guys out here and um, just stand alone. Um, just using the spiccatos here as well. Really, really useful. And uh, let's add a little bit of uh, violas to the bases too. Anyway, uh, I hope this video has given you a little bit of an insight into the Century Ostinato string series. There's a lot of different things and different ways you can play it. So hopefully this video has uh, created a little bit of an overview in terms of how you can use the different string ensembles together. And uh, let me just wrap it up here by playing um, another um, simple piece just made with the four string group. So both basses, cellos, violas, and violins. Mm -hmm.